Hello everyone. I am Dr. Vani. Today I'll be speaking briefly on apheresis. Apheresis is a Greek word which means to separate or to take it away. Basically, in apheresis, the blood is drawn from the donor or the patient, and then the blood components are separated according to the requirements, and the remaining unused blood is then transfused back into the donor or to this, into the patient. <clears throat> it was back in 1972 when Herb Culius and medical technologists built the first blood separator called Fenwell CS3000, along with his team members. What are the uses of apheresis? It is mainly used for collection of blood components. Nowadays, it is also used for therapeutic purposes to treat patients from their illnesses. Coming to selection of apheresis donors, the, uh, the selection of donors for apheresis uses the same criteria as for the whole blood donation. There are some additional requirements like uh, in apheresis, you need a good venous access. So a uh, patient need to have very good venous access as the procedure takes more longer duration than the normal blood uh, donation. So uh, as the cannula or the catheter has to stay intact within the donor for the whole procedure, the patient requires a good venous access. Then uh, other criteria include like uh, platelet count for patients who do frequent platelet donation. Also, uh, the, the, donors who, uh, the donors who are to be doing this apheresis, they need to undergo screening tests for infectious diseases. Now, coming to the uh, methods, there are two methods. One is manual and another is uh, apheresis done using automated cell separation. In automated method, uh, there are two principles used. First is membrane separation, then the another one is centrifugation process. In membrane separation, Systemic anticoagulant like heparin is used. In this process, the blood is passed through the membrane with pores, which allows the plasma to pass while retaining the cells. It can also be used to remove specific pathology components in the plasma, such as immunoglobulins. Well, in centrifugation method, uh, which is most commonly used, it is based on the different specific gravity of the blood components. In this, the, only the extracorporeal uh, circuit of blood is anticoagulated. There are two methods, discontinuous or intermittent, and then another is continuous method. In continuous process, there are two venipuncture sites, and the blood is continuously returned to the donor or the patient. The advantage is that there is less extracorporeal blood. So it is beneficial for the pediatric and for the elderly patients. Coming to intermittent or in discontinuous method, which is uh, which in which the blood is processed in batches. Unlike the continuous process, there is only one venipuncture site. This is the apheresis machine that we have in our hospital. In our setting, we have a well, we have well-trained staffs to handle the instrument, and a trained doctor is always available to monitor through the whole procedure. Speaking about the procedure, first of all, the patient has to undergo the routine process for blood donation, for, from giving consent to counseling. Then the donor will be informed about the procedure and the side effects that can occur during the procedure. Then after taking the consent of the donor, um, the details of the patient like age, sex, weight, height, and all the blood parameters will be uh, fed entered or fed into the monitor. Then according to, the, according to it, the amount of blood to be drawn is estimated by the machine only. Then the whole, when the patient is set uh, for donation, the whole blood is drawn from the donor with the assistance of a pump. As the blood flows into the machine, anticoagulant acid citrate dextrose is added into the tubing to prevent the blood from clotting. 
The anticoagulated blood is now then centrifuged in the machine and the separation is done. The desired component is retained while the remaining blood is returned to the donor. So this is the discontinuous or intermittent method which is followed in our setting. Coming to collection of components, there uh, we have plasma pheresis, in which the main purpose is to collect the derivatives of plasma like coagulation factors, immunoglobulins, etc. Both membrane and filtration method can be used in this uh, in this process in this procedure. This procedure can be repeated every two times per week. Next, we have erythrocyte apheresis. Erythrocyte apheresis um, is was mainly done because there was a uh, chronic shortage of group O R, uh, RBCs, and the good thing is that uh, the Two units of plus uh, units of cells could be collected in uh, one donation, and as our O negative blood are universal do donors, uh, it can be helpful for uh, blood donation to any type of patient. In this case, once uh, the in this case donors can donate only once in four months. Next, coming to leukapheresis, which means to collect white blood cells. The main purpose is for the patients having infectious illness, but they are not responding to antibiotics. Next, we have platelapheresis. In this, the donor can, do can donate every four days. And in 250 ml of uh, uh, ml bag, there are approximately 350,000 microliters of platelet, which is equivalent to six, uh, which is equivalent to uh, six to eight uh, blood uh, bags of random bloods. So in uh, the advantage here is that the uh, recipient is exposed very less to the uh, multiple donor. It's not exposed to multiple donor actually. And uh, the good thing is the patient can again donate in another four days. But in this case, the patient need to do a platelet count before the donation. Coming to therapeutic apheresis, Therapeutic apheresis means, it, uh, in therapeutic apheresis, the blood component which is having disease is removed while the remaining blood is then returned to the patient. In diseases like, it can be used in diseases like myasthenia gravis, sickle cell disease, thrombotic, thrombocytopenia purpura, etc. According to American Society of Apheresis, therapeutic apheresis is categorized to four categories, one to four. In category one, the therapeutic apheresis is acceptable as primary therapy for the disease, for example, myasthenia gravis. While in category two, it can be used as a supportive therapy, and in category three, it is suggested, but the benefit is still not established very well. In category four, Actually, the therapeutic apheresis is discouraged as there is no enough studies to support the use. Coming to advantages of apheresis, in apheresis, multiple units of blood components can be collected from a single donor. So the donor can donate more frequent and the donor can even donate more frequently and the recipients are also exposed to fewer donors. The recipients are also less likely to have febrile transfusion reactions because uh, uh, most of the blood components are reduced from uh, WBCs, which can cause febrile illness. Coming to disadvantages and the side effects, some of the, uh, the most common disadvantages is that it is a very expensive procedure and many poor patients cannot afford. And coming to side effects, uh, most common side effect includes parastasia, which is caused due to citrate use as anticoagulant, as it causes a uh, reduction in the blood calcium level. So uh, what can we do to avoid it is by giving supplement, by giving calcium supplement, and also by slowing the blood flow rate. Other complications are hypotension, allergic reactions to the plasma, catheter site-related complications, etc. 
are my references.